Welcome everybody. Today we are going to discuss about inventory management theories. Uh, before <clears throat> going into that di discussion, we should know why holding an inventory is important. Why should we hold an inventory? Now there are multiple reasons. First of all, we need inventory because we purchase a lot to get the economies of a skill. Because of economic skill, many times suppliers offer some kind of quantity discounts. That's how we save some cost. We save in purchasing and procurement. Secondly, uh, there are lead time. That means we may order a product today. Maybe let's suppose the inventory is running low and we order the item. Now, in most cases, the order will not arrive immediately. It will not happen. So that's why we need to take preparation for any kind of uncertainty. So we need to be prepared. Okay, before going into uncertainty, let me finish the lead time concept. So we need to prepare for the demand that can occur during the lead time period. So that's why we need to hold some inventory. And on top of that, there can be some uncertainty. Now, this uncertainty can be in both sides, in demand side and supply side. The demand can be stochastic. It can, there may be some unexpected changes in customer demand, where forecasting may help us, but unfortunately, due to short life cycle of the product, many times we don't, uh, we are not able to forecast correctly. Mm, there are also many competing products that actually make the forecasting more difficult. Then comes to the supply uncertainty part. In supply uncertainty, if the supplier is not flexible enough, they may not uh, fulfill our demand. So they may supply us with less quantity. Or maybe the quality is not uniform. And there may be some uncertainty in the delivery time. Maybe the supplier committed that they will deliver us on Sunday. But unfortunately, the shipment arrives on Tuesday. Then what I'm going to do for these two days? And how are we going to satisfy the customer uh, for these two days? Because it was unexpected. So these, uh, to tackle this uncertainty, we need to, as a precaution, we hold inventory. So we hold inventory and thus holding inventory help us to take to take a precaution to the, it help us to tackle the uncertainty the unexpected changes in customer demand it help us to leverage the economic scale now so we know that inventory holding inventory adds value to the supply chain management and logistics management now, what is the key question in inventory management? So we know that why inventory is held, but what is crucial is that holding the right amount at the right time in the right place. And that's the difficult part. The key decision in inventory management is how much to order. Now you may say, okay, how much to order? Just order as far as the demand. Is that if the demand is uncertain, okay, then go with the average demand, expected demand, forecast it. However, if you are familiar with the news vendor model or other supply chain model, uh, you may be aware that in inventory management, sometimes actually we order more than the forecasting demand intentionally. Sometimes we order less than the average demand, or sometimes equals average demand. But why? That's what we're going to discuss in this presentation. When we order more and when we order less. So there are some factors that affect the inventory decision. Uh, some of them are customer demand, replenishment lead time, number of different products, 
a length of the planning of horizon. And also ordering costs and holding costs. Holding costs is the inventory cost, the uh, <coughs> cost uh, of maintenance, and also salvage and uh, tax insurance cost. Those are also comes under the holding cost. And there are uh, sometimes uh, while ordering there are there are some fixed costs and variable cost. There are product cost as long as transportation cost. The product cost we may have some quantity discount in the product cost. If we purchase larger amounts, we may get some <clears throat> discount. So these are some factors that we consider in our inventory decision. And many of you considering uh, some of the factors such as holding costs and ordering cost. Uh, there is a famous model which is called economic lot size model, which was developed by Mr. Harris in 1915. Now, what is this model about? There are some, and this model is very famous. And this model actually here the trade off between holding costs and ordering costs because if we order more at a time, our we get less price, so it saves us. If we order more, the ordering cost is decreasing, but at the same time, the inventory cost is increasing, the holding cost is increasing. So there is a trade off between ordering cost and holding cost. And economic order quantity is the optimum point that causes the minimum total inventory cost. Uh, you can uh, in today's in this presentation we are not gonna discuss in detail the derivation of the holding cost. In EOQ model, EOQ that which is economic order quantity is the optimal point that minimizes the total inventory cost, and it assumes uh, zero inventory ordering property. That means uh, the inventory when the inventory is zero, immediately a new order of uh, Q uh, arrived. So that's how these shape uh, inventory profile is uh, showing <coughs> the zero inventory property uh, the maximum inventory is q and minimum inventory is zero so that's how the average inventory is q by two uh, and, and here it's x by two so x is analogous to q uh, if order quantity is x then the average inventory is x by x over two And uh, definitely, it's a very simplified version of real life scenario because it assumes no uncertainty. It assumes uh, fixed demand per day, uh, fixed quantity, fixed order quantity, and it assumes uh, order setup cost is fixed. There is no lead time, no initial inventory, and the planning horizon is infinite. And the famous formula is. For uh, economic order quantity is that root over 2k times d over h, where k stands for fixed cost, d is the demand, h is the holding cost. Now, so we discuss a simplified model, EOQ model, where there is no uncertainty. Now let's relax that assumption. Now consider an uncertain demand. Now how much to order? There is there can be an easy answer that okay let's demand let's order equal to the average demand. For example, uh, you can see on the figure uh, we see a graph <coughs> uh, a plot probability versus sales, uh, which actually is showing the plot is showing that there is uh, around 10 uh, 12 uh, percent probability that the sales will be 8,000. There is 12 percent probability that the sales will be 10,000. There is Mm, 27 I think yeah, around 27 percent probability that the sales will be 12,000 and 22 percent probability that sales would be 14,000 and so on so we have the uh, probability profile for different numbers of sales from this plot from this data uh, we can calculate the expected sales uh, which is uh, the average demand uh, 13,100 and we can just simply order that amount. However, 
if you calculate in detail we want to go into much detail like how much is the profit if we order 13,000 how much is the profit if we order 8,000 how much is the profit if we order 10,000 how much is the profit so let, let's uh, discuss one scenario and then we will show you the ultimate result suppose but they're doing many cases right uh, suppose uh, we order the company orders 10,000 but after ordering it revealed that the actual sales is 8,000 actual demand is 8,000 so what would happen since the sales is 8,000 so we will get profit from 8,000 and 2,000 unit will be salvage we have to salvage the 2,000 unit at $20 per unit so we will uh, we would um, there will be some cost or loss marginal loss for that 2000 unit but we will gain some marginal profit from the 8000 unit but we have to pay the fixed cost as well as variable cost for the 10000 so that's how we calculate the profit for if we order 10,000 but the demand is 8,000 which is 140,000 140 140 similarly we can calculate if the company orders 10,000 but the demand is 10,000 what is the profit if the company ordered 10,000 but the demand is 12,000 what would happen they will earn profit for only 10,000 they will lose the opportunity for the excess demand so which is called goodwill cost or loss sales they, if the demand is 14,000 but they order 10,000 uh, there will be uh, they will earn profit from the 10,000 but they will lose their customer for the extra 4,000 demand so that's how we calculate all the scenario if the company ordered 10,000, what will be the profit? If the company ordered 8,000, what will be the profit? If the company ordered 2,000, what will be the profit? And total that profit graph looks like this. So that's the expected profit and profit versus order quantity. And we can see the expected profit is highest for the uh, if we order 2,000. From previous slide, we knew that average demand is 13,100. But this plot is showing the expected profit is highest for 12,000. So it's better for us to order less than the average demand. Now the question may arise, okay, why? This is strange, right? The average demand is 13,000, but we are ordering 12,000. So when should we order less or when should we order more? It depends on the comparative value it depends on the marginal loss versus marginal profit so if you remember the data that we assume in this example marginal profit which is selling revenue minus variable cost which is 125 minus 80 is 45 dollar but marginal cost which is variable cost minus salvage is only 60 dollar since marginal profit is greater is less than the marginal cost in other words that cost of not selling an additional unit is greater than the profit from selling an additional unit that's why here order quantity is less than the average demand if marginal profit is less than the marginal cost then order quantity should be less than the average demand if marginal profit is greater than the marginal cost, then order quantity is greater than the average demand. Vice versa. So far we discussed EOQ model, then we discussed an inventory model assuming demand uncertainty. Now let's assume that there is an initial inventory. So now if there is an initial inventory, so then we can actually run that cycle with no ordering. We may decide, okay, since we have some inventory, let's finish that inventory first and let's see how much is the profit because in this period, we have no variable cost, 
the variable cost was already uh, considered in the previous period so if we are taking decision in second period or third period and there are some initial inventory which was already paid in the first period so now whatever profit we get from this amount whatever revenue we get from selling the initial inventory is profit for us it's a gain here when there is an initial inventory our decision is whether we make an order or we don't make an order if we make an order then there will be a fixed cost if we make no order there will be no fixed cost so here the amount of now what's the our motivation behind making an order if we make an order maybe it increase our total profit but if you make a new order then there will be a fixed cost as long as the expected increased in profit the expected increase in profit is greater than the fixed cost we may go for a reorder but if the increase in profit is less than the fixed cost we should not go for that let's analyze two cases in case one the initial inventory is five thousand in case two initial inventory ten thousand all the data remain as same as the previous if you remember in previous example the optimal order quantity that maximizes the profit is twelve thousand right and that profit equation that profit graph is the dotted line the blue dotted line it is the same line same graph from the previous slide the dotted line dotted blue line now we add we added a fixed cost we added a revenue equals to the fixed cost and then we draw another line which is red line on top of that why since if we don't make an order then there will be no fixed cost so we can make actually more profit so the red solid line shows us the profit for no reordered condition the dotted line shows us the profit when we make an order so the dotted line considering the fixed cost but the solid line is not considering fixed cost we will analyze two cases case one with an initial inventory of 5000 unit case two uh, initial inventory of 10000 unit in case one if we have 5000 inventory then what does it mean it means let me just direct it to, for you let me look for the laser pointer so that i can mm, let me see where is the laser pointer just give me a few seconds okay so when there is 5000 unit we have two choice either go with the 5000 unit and make a profit of around 220 220000 which is you can see here you can see the associated profit with the initial inventory 5000 and there is an alternate option which is making an order of 7000 and make the total inventory as 12000 that will make us a profit of around 370000 which is more than for the profit 5000 so we are seeing here that making a new order even though it will incur a fixed cost but the total profit 
will be increased compared to the situation of initial inventory 5000. In case of 10,000 inventory, we can see the profit for 10,000 is almost is more than 400,000 dollar. But if we make an order, maybe uh, to uh, an extra order of 2000 unit and then the total inventory would be 2000 the profit for 12000 is less than the profit with 10000 initial inventory in case of initial inventory since we have no fixed cost uh, we are having a larger profit but 12000 and making the inventory full of uh, 2000 unit then we have to pay the fixed cost and that's why the profit level is decreasing so there is a point when so we see that okay when the initial inventory of 5000 we did we make an order but even the initial inventory is 10000 we make no order and we go with the initial inventory as it is now definitely there is a point which is the critical point that if we cross that point if we cross that boundary then we make an order if the inventory level goes beyond the limit a particular limit then we actually make a reorder and we are naming that point as reorder point and you can see if we draw a line from that uh, optimal inventory optimal uh, inventory quantity and it crosses the line red line in around for the 8000 so for 8000 unit 8000 is our what you call reorder point we can uh, see the detailed calculation here where the for inventory 5000 the total profit is 625000 for inventory 12,000, the profit is 771,000. So our profit would be more if we make a reorder of 7,000. That's why we go for the reorder. If we have initial inventory of 10,000, then we make no new order, no fixed cost. It gives us a profit of 827,000. But if we make a reorder, of 2000 then the profit would be 77 1000 uh, I can see here a small mistake which is this one uh, reorder of it should be 2000 it's not 7000 it should be 2000 so I, I hope that you got the point that there must be a critical point and you can see the critical point here uh, if you see the critical point you can see the critical point is here where and it's for 8500 yeah it's 8500 for 8500 you can see the profit with no new order which is red line is equal to profit with uh, reorder which is 12000 so we make we found the background we are actually moving towards an towards driving an inventory policy where there is a minimum point which is which we are calling as reorder point and we are targeting the inventory to fill up to 2000 unit which is the actually maximum unit maximum capacity or maximum level of inventory maximum desired level of inventory so these concept found the this concept actually gives us the foundation for smallest SS policy where whenever the inventory level goes beyond a certain limit a reorder point we make a re reorder and fill the inventory up to that certain level now we're going to discuss two inventory policy where we consider that there is opportunity of um, placing multiple orders one after another and we are going to discuss two type of inventory policy 
one continuous review policy, another is periodic review policy. Now, how we are differentiating between these two? One inventory policy where we continuously monitor the level of inventory position and then we, whenever it crosses a certain limit, then we make a reorder. It is called inventory continuous review policy. On the other hand, if the interval is longer, such as weekly or monthly, then we refer that type of policy as periodic review policy. In continuous review policy, uh, you can, whenever we monitor continuously, and whenever it crosses a certain limit, uh, then we call it a uh, um, reorder level and then we place an order Q and it, there are some lead time that uh, uh, the order takes to uh, arrive when the shipment arrive then inventory reaches its minimum position and immediately it raises to the maximum level when the order arrive from the minimum amount of inventory and maximum amount of inventory, we can calculate the average amount of inventory throughout the period. Now, one thing we need to make, uh, we, need, should, uh, we should mention one thing that when we review the inventory and when we order, uh, suppose the inventory position is crossing a minimum limit, then we order. While ordering, we need to order such an amount so that uh, it will uh, no in the other way uh, when we are saying that it crosses a certain limit what is that limit what is the reorder level the reorder level is such that so that the remaining inventory is sufficient for the demand during the lead time so we set the reorder level in such a way so that it satisfies the demand during the lead time, which is lead time times average demand plus safety factor. Reorder level equals average demand during lead time plus safety stock. Average demand is AVG times lead time, which that gives us average demand during the time, plus Z or Z, which is safety factor, times standard deviation, times root L. Now you may wonder why there is root L. Actually, the way we, it is related with the basic calculus, the way the formula is derived. The variance during the lead time is STD square times L, times the lead time. Variance time lead time. So now when we are calculating standard deviation, we take root, so STD times root L, times safety factor, which is Z or Z. Our service level in this case would be the probability that the demand during lead time would be less than the reorder level. We can calculate the order quantity by assuming EUQ model. From the EUQ model, we know that Q equals to root over 2K times average demand over holding cost. Our, as we already mentioned, the inventory reaches its maximum uh, minimum level just immediately before the shipment arrives, which is the safety stock and then when shipment arrive the inventory position reaches a maximum point which is q with uh, the number of order q plus safety stock so minimum inventory is safety stock maximum inventory is q plus safety stock hence the average inventory is q over 2 plus safety stock if the lead time is variable in previous example, the demand, demand was stochastic. That's why we assume that AVG is the average demand and STD is the standard deviation of demand. Now, if the lead time L is variable, then we need some modification in the demand. 
in the form model and you can see the uh, how the modification uh, modification reorder point r equals to mean lead time times mean demand which that gives us average demand during lead time plus safety stock safety stock is safety factor times standard deviation of demand during lead time standard deviation during demand standard deviation of demand during lead time is mean lead time times variance of demand plus mean demand times variance of lead time and then finally root over that's what is the standard deviation of demand during lead time now discuss periodic review in continuous review we monitored continuously in very short interval but if we monitor once in a week or maybe monthly then we need to modify the inventory model because now we need to order enough to raise the inventory level so that the inventory is sufficient to cover the demand during the reorder period and during the lead time we will um, discuss the basis stock model which is a type of periodic review policy in basis stock model after each review we ordered enough to raise the inventory position to the basis stock level now we need to calculate what is the basis stock level how do we calculate this it is the concept is similar to the continuous review policy however there are some changes and modification here when we order we raise the inventory position such that average demand during reorder period plus late time period plus safety stock our safety stock is z times std times root over r plus l and our average demand during r plus l period is r plus l times average demand the minimum inventory is a safety stock and maximum inventory is the order that arrives when uh, after the minimum inventory occur since the order arrives after the lead time so the order is reordered times reorder time reorder interval time times average demand so we have the minimum inventory level and maximum inventory level from these two data we can calculate average level of inventory so far we discussed eoq and then we discussed inventory decision in uncertain environment uh, news vendor model is one of the example then we discussed continuous review policy and periodic review policy in these kind uh, inventory practices if we plot that what is the service level and compare it with the inventory level and late time we see that service level increases if we want to increase the service level we have to increase the inventory level if our lead time is increased then our service level decrease the lower the lead time the lower the service level and you can see the marginal impact of service level decreases with the inventory level so this graph shows us the trade-off between service level inventory level and lead time then finally in today's presentation we're going to discuss 
some warehouse activity profiling technique that help us to identify root causes and to pinpoint major opportunities for process environment and also to provide an objective basis for project team decision making and warehouse activity profiling profiling is always better because a picture worth more than a thousand word and another advantage of profiling is that it actually illustrates you what is the problem or where is the problem or it saves you from the uh, loophole of it save you from the drowning hall of average order size like many times we calculate average but average that never happen and there is an example on your slide where suppose that you have 100 orders out of that 50 orders 50 orders give an order of one item that 50 numbers of one item order on the other hand there is another 50 orders where each order is asking for three unit so the order of three now if you take average the average order side would be two however nobody ever ordered two products either they order one product or three product one items or three items but if we calculate average order size it will be two it will be two unit that never happened so in these so we if we just calculate the average order size it will give us the answer of two but if we see the items per order distribution we can easily identify that there is some problem in calculating average average we should not use the average data always so that's how profiling saves us from drawing in a shallow level of on average and definitely this kind of profiling save our cost and it stipulates creative thinking it reveals the warehouse design and planning opportunity so these are the advantages and that's why we are very much prone to take advantage leverage of re uh, activity profiling there are many types of activity profiling like customer order profile purchase order profile item activity profile activity relationship profile inventory profile automation profile um, so there are many types of profile but we need to focus that our objective is not to just draw and draw profiles after profiles our main objective is to analyze the inventory condition and take decision to improve the performance of warehouse so that's our ultimate objective our objective is not to draw a profile and objective is not to draw a custom order profile inventory profile or item activity profile the main objective is to improve the performance of the warehouse in uh, let's discuss only inventory profile we are not other types of uh, activity profiling we are just discussing a little bit about inventory profiling inventory profiling it shows the uh, it reveals the opportunity for improving inventory management practice and there can be two types of inventory profiling uh, one is item family inventory distribution and another one can be handling unique inventory distribution which is uh, the data is expressed in handling unit distribution in terms of pallets of merchandise or SKUs stock keeping units in item family distribution most of the time the inventory data is expressed in times of pieces dollars of days of sales here is one example for you item family inventory distribution where we see that okay uh, some items maybe out of um, out of uh, maybe um, 100 items so out of 100 items only five items uh, is responsible for um, <clears throat> around 8% of sales so using Pareto analysis we calculate this data we can calculate this data uh, I believe that uh, this graph was adapted from the book of Fragile Edward Fragile so uh, we use the data from that book and how these how we can develop the item family inventory distribution we can discuss a little bit about that so alfred pareto 
very early uh, he gave a theory 80 20 rule that 20 percent uh, 80 percent of the wealth 80 percent of world's with wealth is in the hand of 20 percent of the people and in other cases 20 percent people is responsible for 80 percent of causes or 20 percent problem 20 percent defects are responsible 20 percent issues are responsible for 80 percent defect so we apply that concept 80 20 rule in abc profiling so the profiling that you are seeing on the slide is called abc profiling where we rank the item according to their percentage of sales according to how much the items is how much is the sales volume or how much is our items is contributing in our revenue based on that we ranked the items and we ranked in a descending order where the highest percentage of sales or highest percentage of revenue is at the top and then we rank the other items in we see that five percent of the item is responsible for 80 percent of the sales and 80 percent of the items are resulting in very less sales now if we keep lots of inventory of c times item then what will happen this inventory will be just sitting down in the warehouse on the other hand there will be always shortage there will be always a stock out situation for eight items so from this profiling that uh, this kind of profile item family inventory distribution help us to identify okay which which type of item should we order more and which type of item is a candidate for removal we can either completely eliminate c items or sometimes we are bound to keep c items for example in grocery we are even though we know that some products are not best selling are not best sellers but still we have to keep that product because those key items actually protect the sales of a and b items uh, so what should we do well, we may either remove the c item or we may keep them in the uh, in a dense area or we may store those c items which are contributing less to our sales revenue on the second and third floor of the mezzanine in terms of stock keeping units and days of hand inventory we can also plot that uh, <coughs> inventory profile and it gives us similar type of meaning and then finally we can um, do a performance gap analysis where uh, this chart is called rudder chart or spider graph uh, we can develop this kind of um, graph either by hand or through excel and then we can uh, compare our condition the company condition with a world class practice so for example if world class practice in productivity is five then and ours is maybe two or one then we plot that point in this rudder chart so in this rudder chart so this is a, just a typical example of inventory performance gap analysis where we are uh, measuring in the performance gap in terms of shipping accuracy dock stock time warehouse order cycle time safety productivity storage density and inventory accuracy where our current is our current situation is red line and world class situation is blue line unfortunately in the chart it's actually reverse i hope you can identify the mistake you see i think the legend is wrong it should be reverse the current situation is red this red line this current situation is red line and worthless performance is the blue line so we will, in our next video we can actually correct these uh, typos and mistakes i hope that you understand you get the main point that how we compared our current situation 
with the world class practices. And I think your rudder chart or spider graph is a, a nice tool to illustrate our performance gap. So what we see from this graph. So in shipping accuracy, actually we are very close to world class situation. So that means we are pretty good in shipping accuracy. On the other hand, in productivity and safety, we are very much lacking. So we need to improve our productivity and safety. In storage density, our condition is moderate. And in and same with the warehouse order cycle time, our condition is moderate. Shipping accuracy is good. It's very low inventory accuracy. So we need to improve a lot. So I think how many candidates for improvement? One is safety, another is productivity, another is inventory accuracy. So you see how this kind of illustration actually helps us to uh, find out the way uh, which one should we improve. So, uh, so far we have discussed the inventory decision, how much to order, and then economic order quantity model. Then we incorporated the demand and certainty and the time in the model. Then after that we discussed continuous review and periodic review policy. We also discussed trade off among service level, inventory level, and the time. Mm, then we discussed warehouse activity profile uh, and EBC profiling and inventory performance gap analysis. Finally, we would like to recommend you to read some textbook in this topic if you are really interested to learn more about inventory modeling and warehousing practices. So we referred three textbook and throughout this presentation I have used the content from these three books. Uh, the first two books which is uh, which are famous, uh, Simchi Levi and Simchi Levi Supply Chain Concept Strategy and Case Studies. Another one is by Chopra Mendel. So this two book is good for supply chain modeling and you can learn inventory modeling practice. Then uh, how much uh, the how to calculate the order and how much to store that kind of issues. On the other hand, the third book, WordPress Warehousing and Material Handling, this is um, this is better for warehousing practices such as activity profiling or handling inside the warehousing or storage, order keeping and what kind of storage retrieval system, or what kind of palletization uh, and those kind of concepts are discussed well in the book by Brazil. So these three books is very good. Uh, I recommend you to purchase these three books and read so that you can apply in your industry or in, you can prepare your lecture based on these three books. And that's all from today. Thank you so much for listening to my lecture. Thank you.